Hello everyone, and welcome back, and I hope you're doing well, and today we're going to be continuing our exploration through the derivation of the common statistical distributions, um, which in some sense are glorified calculus examples uh, that kind of uh, use the change of variables relation. So up to this point we have the Z distribution, which is pretty much a base uh, line distribution for a lot of parametric testing methods and statistical inference and machine learning algorithms and data science and all that kind of uh, fun stuff. Uh, and then we also have the chi-squared uh, distribution, which is very useful for analyzing uh, variances and that type of thing. And then last time we derived the t-distribution, uh, which is uh, commonly applied to similar problems that the z-distribution is uh, when you happen to not know the standard deviation of the population that you're actually working in. So the distribution that we're going to be working today is going to be a comparison uh, distribution, in particular between two chi-squared random variables, in particular a chi-square m uh, distribution and a chi-square n distribution. Uh, m and n, of course, need not be different, but they can be the same if they so choose to. Uh, but we're going to be assuming that these variables are independent of each other. That is, the covariance between them is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to define f to be the quotient of scaled versions of these chi-square random variables, where the scaling parameters are, of course, their associated degrees of freedom. And we're going to call this uh, quotient, or test statistic, f. So the question that we plan to answer today is, what is the distribution of this random variable f? Obviously, by the name of the variable that we're choosing, we're going to be calling this the f distribution. But what exactly is the probability dis uh, density function for f? And what are the sum of, uh, some of the main properties that we definitely should know uh, when working with the f distribution? In case you don't know about the f distribution, uh, very, very useful uh, in the realm of equality of uh, means across various uh, groups. Uh, and also very useful if you ever plan to use, uh, say, multiple linear regression uh, to predict or model uh, systems. All right, so what are we going to do? So we're going to begin by defining our variables. In particular, we're going to define f to be equal to x divided by m and y divided by m. And our goal uh, for our change of variables this time, uh, we're going to be starting off with variables x and y. We're going to be mapping to a new uh, two-dimensional world, f and u, and you can choose u uh, to be equal to y in this case, the bottom uh, chi square random variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to condition off that variable u uh, in order to be left with only the f random variable that we seek to analyze. All right. So uh, once we have our definitions of our variables, f and u, then we just need to isolate uh, this particular thing. Keep in mind currently these functions are of x and y, and we need to move them to functions of f and u. So how are we going to do that? So the first equation is going to give us f y uh, times m. So f y times m, so some fraction manipulation going on. Uh, all divided by n, and this is going to be equal to x. And from that, we're going to say that x is equal to m capital F capital U all over little m, and then y will be just be equal to u. Right. So here we have x and y on the left-hand side, and then we have little f and little u uh, going to be playing the role of the variables on the right-hand side. So let's, of course, uh, start building our Jacobian for our transformation. So our variables that we're coming from are x and y, and then we're going to f and u. So xf, xu, yf, and yu uh, will be our partial derivatives that we need to evaluate. So the partial derivative of f, uh, x with respect to f will be equal to mu divided by m. The derivative of x with respect to u will be mf divided by little m. And then uh, y with respect to f, well, y doesn't have any f's in it, so that's going to be equal to 0. And y with respect to u will just be equal to 1. Uh, so therefore, the determinant of our Jacobian will be equal to mu all over n. And keep in mind this as a positive number. So therefore, our joint probability density function uh, between f and u, and I'm going to be using little f and little u for my variables, is going to be equal to the probability density function of x and y uh, with respect to little x and little y times this Jacobian number uh, mu over n. So that's the beginning of our change of variables setup. 
Keep in mind, x and y are both chosen uh, to be chi-squared random variables, so we're pretty much just going to be repeating the probability density function for chi-squared twice, uh, just with different variables, and then we're going to be switching our variables up uh, from x, y into u and f. So this is going to be equal to what? So we're going to have 1 all over 2 to the m over 2 times gamma m over 2. That's our first constant. e to the minus 1 half x times x to the power of m over 2 minus 1. That's our first. And then our second. Uh, 1 over 2 to the n over 2 times gamma n over 2. And then e to the power of minus 1 half y and then y to the n over 2 minus 1, that's our second, and don't forget your Jacobian at the very end. So from here we're going to be mapping our variables one at a time, so y is going to be changed to u, and x is going to be changed to m f u over n. Agree? So once we have that, then f of f u f u will be equal to, and let's combine uh, things as quickly as possible. So we have powers of two, we have our gammas next to each other, so we're going to have a leading coefficient of one over two to the m over two plus n over two times gamma m over two gamma n over two multiplied. And then let's combine our exponential terms, so e to the power of minus one half x turns into uh, mfu over n, and y turns into u. So we can write this as just u plus mfu over n. Uh, and then we're going to have our u, which is x in disguise, uh, to the power of n over 2 minus 1. Uh, and then we're going to have the other variable uh, x, uh, which is going to turn into mfu over n. So we're going to have m f u over n to the power of m over 2 minus 1 times our lonely little Jacobian m u over n at the very end. And then we can clean this up uh, as much as we can. Uh, and that's going to give us, how do I want to spice this up? Let's write this as uh, m over m uh, to the power of m over 2 uh, multiplied by 1 over 2 Let's write this as 1 half m plus n uh, times 1 half in the front. And then let's write this as gamma m over 2 gamma n over 2. Uh, and let's just group uh, that stuff together. And then we're going to have u to the n over 2 plus m over 2. Let's group that together, minus 1, times f to the m over 2 minus 1 times some e to the stuff, e to the minus one half, uh, one plus m f over n u. All right. Uh, so everything on the left hand side, that's obviously going to be uh, a constant, so let's just call that k. And then over here we're going to have a function of f and u that needs to be integrated over the domain of the variable that we plan to condition over of, which in this case is going to be u, uh, which in this case is just a secret version of y, which again is the secret version of a chi-squared random variable. All right. So therefore what? So f of our variable, f, uh, will be equal to uh, that constant k times, and we can factor out that f since we're going to be integrating with respect to u. So we're going to have f to the power of m over 2 minus 1 as our leading coefficient uh, times the integral from 0 to infinity, and then we're going to have u to the m over 2 plus n over 2 minus 1, and then times e to the minus some constant times u. So this constant here, I'm just going to call that alpha. So we're going to just have alpha u du. All right. So here, alpha is equal to 1 half, 1 plus mf all over n. And that's a positive number. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just transformed this into the form of u to the something minus 1 times e to the minus alpha u du. And this is a very, very important identity that you definitely should know um, because it just comes up so often. Uh, so once we actually use this identity, and I highly suggest you try and prove this on your own, we're going to have kf to the m over 2 minus 1. 
as a leading coefficient. And then over here, we're going to have gamma, n over 2 plus n over 2. If alpha was equal to 1, that would be it. But that's going to be scaled, in particular, to that number, alpha, uh, to the m over 2 plus n over 2. And that's going to be our probability density function for the F distribution. Um, but obviously, we're going to be cleaning this up uh, just a little bit more to make it a little bit more practical in terms of use. So what are we going to do now? So we're going to obviously replace our constant k, and we're going to replace that constant alpha and simplify as much as possible. So once we do that, we're going to have the following. So our probability density function for f will be equal to, so we still have that m over n uh, to the power of m over 2. And now we have a bunch of gamma functions kind of hanging out together. So we'll just write that as gamma m over 2 plus m over 2 all over gamma m over 2 times gamma n over 2. And you should recognize this coefficient as the reciprocal of a beta coefficient. If you don't know what the beta function is, uh, beta AB is just gamma A, gamma B over gamma A plus B. Uh, and then we're going to have some more uh, fun and excitement. Uh, so let's write our f to the m over 2 minus 1 term on top. And on the bottom, let's bring out our 2s and our fractions. So we're going to have 2 uh, to the m over 2 plus n over 2 as our leading coefficient uh, times some more excitement. Uh, so this is our alpha. So 2 to the m over 2 plus n over 2. Uh, and then we're going to have 1 plus m f over n to the m over 2 plus n over 2. Right? So that gives us our alpha coefficient and that stuff from the constant k that we defined earlier. And then we can just clean this up just a tad bit. So this is going to be equal to 1 over, so our beta coefficient, beta, m over 2, n over 2. That's a two-term uh, function, in case you're not familiar with it. And then m over n to the power of m over 2. And then let's uh, break this part uh, very carefully. Uh, obviously, know that those things cancel each other out. Uh, leaving us with 1 plus m f all over n uh, to the m over 2 plus n over 2 uh, times, and let's break up this uh, m over 2 term, so m over 2 uh, times 1 over f. Right. Uh, the reason I do this is because we have a lot of 1 half exponents, and it's uh, going to be beneficial if we can group them together as quickly uh, as possible. That's going to leave us a 1 over f term uh, in front of this beta coefficient, uh, so just keep that in mind. So that's going to be equal to 1 over f beta m over 2 n over 2 uh, times, and since everything now has a power of 1 half technically on it, I'm just going to throw all of this uh, under a square root bar. So we're going to have m f to the power of m n to the power of n all over mf plus n once you get that common denominator on the bottom of m plus n. Right? And that's pretty uh, clean of a function, so we'll just take that as the definition of a random variable. Right? So if x is associated to what we refer to as an f distribution, which has two parameters, obviously, m and n, m for the top, chi square random variable, degrees of freedom, and n, the degrees of freedom for the bottom, chi square random variable, then the probability density function uh, for x uh, will be equal to uh, 1 over x to the beta m over 2 n over 2. That's just a number. Don't be scared of it, uh, except for that x in the front. Uh, and then we're going to have mx to the power of m n to the power of n multiplied. And then mx plus n to the power of m plus n. And here the domain of x is greater than 0, uh, where x being equal to 0 sometimes defined as the limit, which is actually equal to 0. But this is the probability density function for the f distribution. Quite nice, quite interesting. So in terms of the shape, it has roughly the same shape um, as a chi-square. Uh, random variable. It has that skewed right uh, type of shape. And it has several other important properties that I'll mention here, um, but the proofs of them are virtually just calculus exercises. So if x is a uh, f random variable, uh, then the expected value of this random variable uh, 
mn uh, actually only depends on the bottom degrees of freedom. It's just going to be n divided by n minus 2, and this obviously is going to be defined only for n greater than 2. And you might even recognize that as the variance formula for the t-distribution. So that's actually uh, quite interesting. Uh, the variance formula uh, proof for an F distribution, definitely an exciting uh, exercise if you ever find yourself bored and want to do some calculus, uh, you know, just because you love calculus. Uh, we're going to have 2 times m plus m minus 2 times n squared all over m times m minus 2 squared uh, times m minus 4. And this obviously is only going to be defined when n is greater than 4. Um, when n is less than or equal to 4, we usually say that the variance is undefined. Or we can define it to be equal to some un other number, uh, depending on whatever properties you want it to have. Uh, some very beautiful properties, I think, is useful for this. Uh, if x is associated to an fmn distribution, uh, and you take this variable and flip it, and this is a very easy proof, take a guess what type of distribution you'll have. You'll have an f n m distribution. The only difference is uh, the degrees of freedom swap. And that shouldn't be too surprising because what is f? Well, f is just a quotient of two chi-squared random variables. So if you flip the chi-squareds, they're still chi-squareds. The only difference is the degrees of freedom associated to it. Uh, the last uh, identity I want to mention today, also quite fun to prove, uh, this links the t-distribution and the f-distribution together. So if you have x uh, being associated to a tn distribution, and you take x and you square it, so if you square a t distribution, what type of distribution will you get? And you might think, oh, well, this is kind of awkward. Well, remember how we built chi-square. Chi-square is just a standard normal squared. Um, and t is almost like a standard normal, just, you know, fatter tails. So when you take a t random variable and you square it, and obviously that's just a tn squared distribution. Some people call it a t squared distribution. Uh, this is actually going to follow an f1n distribution. So in some sense, a t squared distribution is just an f distribution in disguise. And I find that very kind of interesting, especially if you don't know the statistical applications of f and t squared. All right, um, but that's the derivation of the f distribution and some properties that you definitely should know. Um, so if you want to learn anything about the applications of f, for example, uh, multiple linear regression, for example, or multivariate statistics, uh, definitely check out those topics. Uh, and I hope you enjoy uh, learning about them. But most of all, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.